All right, hello everyone. My name is Financial Charles. Today is February 12th of 2024. Uh, Bitcoin is currently right now, it's about 49850 But we did officially reach uh, the $50,000 mark. Here's the daily. And early in the morning, we tickled it. We went right to $50,000. Uh, we wicked there. And then obviously, just uh, later on that day, it went all the way up to 50000 three hundred dollars and we're pretty much just right there at the fifty thousand dollar mark but we did officially reach it and we did surpass it today which is incredible news everyone is super bullish in the space right now and i just want to show you guys the fear and greed index right now we're at about a 70 so that's pretty high if you compare it to uh what the fear and greed index has been over the past 365 days so basically if we can go back and look at you know the february march april may if this would load oh my goodness but you know this is the time that you wanted to buy this whole entire section right here is when you wanted to buy so we even did get you know around that 70 range over here back in april of 2023 but regardless those were good times to buy uh, especially compared to today's prices and then also we went up to 70 back in october when bitcoin really was launching up from that twenty five thousand thirty thousand dollar range and completely surpassed it right now we're about in that same range again and so people are uh, pretty greedy but the good news is is the mainstream media is still not caught up and you know retail investors and casual you know People that usually are typically buying the top of the markets, they're not in there yet. People are still doubting Bitcoin. And, you know, it, it's just such a good time to be alive right now. It's such a good time to be invested in these markets. You know, we did go up pretty high here and then we completely surpassed this little wick that we got going on here. It's incredible. Here's the Bitcoin rainbow chart for today. We are in, we finally surpassed that accumulate little time frame and now we are at that still cheap so we went we were at the the dark green accumulate for quite a while and today is the day that we have now broken into the still cheap so excuse me so according to the rainbow chart it is still cheap to buy we so am i going to stop buying no but definitely uh continue to buy I saw a post on Reddit, I don't have it up right now, but there was a post saying that 91% of all wallets are now in profit. And obviously the only people that are not in profit are the people that not only bought at 69,000, but they bought at 69 and they did not dollar cost average. Even if you bought this very top and you dollar cost average this whole entire time like you were supposed to, you would have been in profit even back here Back here, when we, you know, surpassed 35,000 even, you know, you would have been in profit. But the only people that are not in profit are the people that bought at the top and they completely got scared and they, they did an even dollar cost average down here, which you were supposed to. You're always supposed to dollar cost average into the market. You don't have to lump sum your entire paycheck, but at least allocate a certain percentage of your check into Bitcoin. Doesn't matter how small that percentage is. Because, you know, if you dollar cost average, your cost basis from up here gets averaged down because the prices here are so low. And then you eventually get into uh, get back in profit without even reaching the all time high. Like I am I am multiples in profit and we're not even at the all time high yet. Right now, I have in terms of U.S. dollar value, I have so much more U.S. dollars than I well U.S. dollar value portfolio right now at 50,000 than I did when it was all the way at the top of 69,000, if that makes sense. I mean, I've already mentioned that before on the channel, but yeah, everyone here in Bitcoin, everyone is just so bullish right now. Um, you know, the ETFs are gobbling up 12 times more Bitcoin than are being issued. And that was another uh, point I wanted to make. Um, but before I get into that, I wanted to say that I just recently, uh, it was yesterday, I spoke on a crypto talk show. It was the first time speaking in front of a live audience. Uh, in terms of you know crypto and Bitcoin and it was great and I shared a lot of important points I pretty much just shared my story of how you know I got into Bitcoin and how I started accumulating a ton of Bitcoin and how I got to where I am today so uh, it was cool and I had some really important points that I was speaking about uh, you know as we all know there's only 21 million coins you know and you know people keep on gobbling it up the uh, Michael Saylor has accumulated 
or Michael Saylor's micro strategy has accumulated 200,000 bitcoins over the past four years, and he was the ultimate uh, bull. He's the ultimate like public company bull, and it took him four years to accumulate 200,000 bitcoin. It took BlackRock and Fidelity one month to accumulate 200,000 bitcoin. It's been a month since the ETF has launched, and they're gobbling up, like I said, 12 times more than what is being issued. Right now, today, as we speak, there's approximately 900 new Bitcoins being issued per day. And when the halving in April comes, we will have... Sorry, I got a burp again. <clears throat> I just ate lunch, so... Once April comes, in about 60 days, the Bitcoin halving will become... You know, the Bitcoin halving will be here, and then the issuance goes from 900 Bitcoins per day to 450 Bitcoins per day only. So over uh, from 2024 to 2028, there will only be 650,000 new Bitcoins being issued. Think of that. Over the next four years, once this halving comes, over the next four years, 650,000 Bitcoin, only new Bitcoin. Only 650,000 new Bitcoin will be put into circulation, but it took BlackRock and Fidelity one month to accumulate one third of that in one single month. So imagine how much Bitcoin is going to be accumulated throughout 2024. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is the supply shock is coming. The supply is quickly dwindling and Bitcoin is just becoming more and more rare by the day. And that's why it just keeps going up. I can't believe that it's gone up this fast. I did not expect for it to go up this fast in a year. And yeah, we are just, we continue to be here at the uh, the $50,000 range. And it seems like we're, uh, you know, on the daily, uh, doesn't mean too much, but it seems like we're, you know, building support over here at this 47.9 or 49.7 uh range and then we will just keep going up this blue line right here pretty much represents the fifty thousand dollar range so it's going to keep going up keep going up and uh one thing i wanted to mention in this video too that i forgot to mention in the talk show because i was really i was live i was just speaking off the top of my head like i do with these videos i completely forgot to mention you know us dollar debt so in in life right in life the elites try to tell you, pay off your debt, pay off your debt, you know, and they even, or maybe your parents told you, hey, make sure you don't take out debt, make sure you're debt free, make sure you pay off your debt. And, you know, that's just what the elites told them. Like, previous generations fell for that propaganda. They fell for, uh, you know, propaganda that enslaves them and empowers the, the, the entities that are enslaving them. So the way that people get rich... Well, obviously, it's all it's by saving and or not even saving, but it's by investing, by starting a business. But also, it's to use debt to your advantage. Um, to pay off your debt is so fundamentally. Let me talk about this. Fundamentally, debt isn't necessarily bad if you're taking out U.S. dollar debt and it's a low interest rate. And no, let me explain why. You know, all these all these big. Uh, businesses and these rich high net worth individuals they have millions and millions of dollars in debt so how how are they one of the richest but they have millions and millions in debt is because they use the debt to their advantage um there's two debts there's good debt there's bad debt uh debt that is used to buy consumer goods typically is bad debt because consumer goods or living expenses or whatever that's not going to produce any extra income for you high interest debt uh, that's typically bad debt because, you know, if the debt interest rate is higher than what the market can uh, provide to you, uh, you're losing money. Now, let me talk about good interest debt. If you take out a debt that is low interest, that's good debt. If you take out a loan, uh, low interest, and then you invest that borrowed money in assets that outpace the uh, in interest rate of your debt, that's good debt. You're making money. And that's like, I don't, you don't, Is that's simple. It's simple math. And it's just such a shame to see like previous generations be tricked to not take out debt because you're, you're leaving a very powerful tool on the, ta on the table. You're not taking advantage of a very powerful tool.
So if you if you have a if you take out a debt at 5% and then you invest it in the S&P 500 which earns 10% on average per year, you're earning 5% on whatever your debt is, you know? So if you borrow $100,000 at 5%, at the end of the year you will owe $105,000. If you use that borrowed $100,000 to invest in the S&P 500 and the S&P appreciates 10%, you now have $110,000. So you have $110,000, but you owe $105,000. You have $5,000. Like that tool, like taking out that debt just made you $5,000. And, you know, best thing is we're not even talking about the S&P 500 here. We're talking about Bitcoin. Ever since Bitcoin's inception, Bitcoin has massively outperformed the S&P 500 during its whole entire lifetime. And the S&P 500 is the market standard. 90% uh, of uh, professionals cannot outperform the S&P 500 over a long period of time. All right. Of professionals, hedge fund investors, all of them. So S&P has always been the golden market standard. And Bitcoin has uh, massively outperformed the S&P 500 ever since its uh, inception. So here we are, we're taking out low interest debt to invest in the hardest asset in the world. And not only that, let's just put interest rate aside too. Let's put interest rate aside. Fundamentally, we all know that the US dollar gets printed unlimitedly. And therefore, the US dollar is continuously losing value, which is why consumer goods go up in price over time. <gasps> and that's why the Chipotle bowl used to be $10 and now it's 16. You know, that's why... That's why uh, houses used to be $27,000 and now it's, uh, you know, half a million to a million dollars for a house, you know? Uh, and things will always go up over time. That's why uh, shoes used to be $10, now they're $100. That's why clothes, shirts used to be, you know, a couple dollars or whatever it was, and now shirts are $20, $50, all that. You know, like $50 is a standard price for a shirt nowadays, you know? So... You, the U.S. dollar fundamentally will always lose value. So if you have a low interest, low interest rate debt, over time the purchasing power of your debt is less and less, even if the number itself is growing. So let's go back to that five percent, five percent um example. So, oh man, what am I trying to say? You take out a hundred thousand dollars with a five percent interest rate, and then at the end of one year you owe one hundred and five thousand dollars but let's say that inflation is seven percent a year i'm not talking about cpi inflation where the government can choose what's in the uh, basket that makes up cpi i'm talking about actual inflation they've printed the amount of dollars in circulation goes up by seven percent a year ever since 1960. that's the m2 money supply so really the dollar is being inflated by about seven percent a year there's seven percent more dollars each year so if you owe $105,000, but your dollar lost 7% of its purchasing power. So even though the number says you owe $105,000, the purchasing power of your debt is less. So already there, even without investing, you know, the debt, as time goes on, the value of that debt decreases. So it's always good to take out debt unless you're taking out a 30%, you know, interest rate debt or any interest rate above 7%. It's not good. Anything below 7%. Ideally, you would want something below 5%. But all of these debts, you're in, in terms of actual buying power and, you know, in, in actual value of the debt, you are incentivized to hold on to that 5% debt as long as you possibly can, you know. And just just service it with the minimum monthly payment. You are incentivized to hold on to it for as long as possible. And then whatever money you have coming in, just invest it in assets and it outpaces the you know, it outpaces the debt. So if you have a debt, if you have a low interest rate debt, you hold on to it for as long as possible. Service it with the monthly minimum, uh, and then after that, you know, all your money, just keep on investing and then you will end up ahead. You will end up ahead. The reason that, you know, one of the reasons that makes that housing is so valuable is because you're able to leverage your money like like crazy. If you put 20% down on a house, let's say you put 20% down on a $1 million home, you put $200,000 down to control a $1 million asset, and now you have $1 million worth of exposure to the market. And housing typically goes up about 5% a year. 
So, like, you know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no reason to pay off that debt at all. There's no reason to pay off that debt at all because with each year that goes by, the purchasing, like I said, the purchasing power and the value of that debt is going down without you doing anything. That one hundred and five thousand dollars that you have at the one hundred and five thousand dollars of debt that you have at the end of that first year, the value of that is less than the one hundred thousand dollars that you had of debt that you had at the beginning of the year. You know what I'm saying? Let's make this even easier. Like this is a no brainer right here. If you have, let's say, a zero percent interest rate, I don't know how you can get that. But if you had a zero percent interest rate on a one hundred thousand dollar debt in two thousand twenty four. And then you wait till 2044. That $100,000 debt that you held on to, it's going to be minuscule. Like, it's going to be minuscule in compared to $100,000 today, if that makes sense. Because what is $100,000 going to buy you in 2044? It's going to buy you a fraction of what it can buy you today. Because the dollar is always, always losing value. So the, the rich, they, they take advantage of low interest rate debt. And they also take advantage of investing in assets. And that's how you get ahead in this life. You can never, it's impossible to trade your hours to become rich. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, your time is limited. But, you know, with investing, you can make multiples. You can make multiples more than what you can make in an hourly hourly uh, job. If, you know, there's only 18,000, if you, there's only 18,000 days in 50 years. All right. And there's, a, there's only a handful amount of hours. There's probably 400,000 hours in 18,000 days if you traded all every single one of those dollars or if you traded every single one of those hours for twenty dollars per hour you're probably only making eight million dollars throughout your whole entire lifetime and that's assuming that you're trading in 24 hours of your day which is impossible because you have to sleep eight eight of those hours a day and is also assuming that you're not buying anything at all which is impossible because you need to have living expenses in order to keep on living so it's impossible for you to work an hourly job and become rich. It is absolutely impossible. So you have to take advantage of investing you, you, or you have to start a business and you have to leverage. You have to use leverage to your advantage. You have to use debt to your advantage. So, and you know, why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about, you know, low interest rate debt and all that stuff? It's because ideally when you take out, when you take out debt, in the form of US dollar and then you put it into Bitcoin, you are going short the US dollar and you are going long Bitcoin, which is the fundamental truth. Uh, US dollar deserves to go, you're, you're supposed to go short on the US dollar because the US dollar is always losing value. You're supposed to go long on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is always gaining value. So am I saying to take out you know, debt to invest in Bitcoin? I mean, for me, it's yes. If you can get a low interest rate debt, if you can get a low interest rate debt, which is in my definition, it's anything below 5%. If you can get an, uh, an interest rate below 5%, go do that and invest in Bitcoin. You will win. That's what I've been doing this whole entire time. And that's the reason why I'm at over 1.5 Bitcoins is because I did that. And, you know, even Jack Mallers, CEO of Strike, and this is what I do. You open up a new credit card with a uh with a 18 percent or not 18 percent but a 18 month time frame of zero percent apr so that means you have a zero percent um you have a zero percent interest rate for the first 18 months on that credit card take out a balance transfer and the balance transfer is going to cost probably a three percent to five percent fee and then you take that money and then you just invest it in bitcoin if Bitcoin goes up 5%, you already beat it. You already beat the interest rate or like the fee, the 5% fee that you paid to take out the debt. You know what I'm saying? And Bitcoin, like look at look at Ethereum on this chart right here. It's already up almost 5% in one day, in one day. Bitcoin is up 3% today. It was up 3% yesterday and it was up 3% the day before and it was up 5% the day before. You know, Bitcoin has gone on a nonstop rally for the past week. You know what I'm saying? Like anyone that has not taken out a balance transfer, 0% APR on like on their credit card, they're losing value in, compared, in, in comparison to me. You know, like you're not, they're not growing as fast as I am growing. And this is not the top. $50,000 is not the top. This is just the very beginning. We're not even at the all-time high yet, you know? So 
am I <laughs> am I saying take out debt to buy Bitcoin? I'm saying yeah. You know, if you if you ask a financial advisor that, they're gonna think you're crazy. If you invest, uh, you know, into Bitcoin, they're gonna think you're crazy. But you know, this is fundamentally is the fundamental truth. If it is fundamentally sound to short an ever devaluing currency and put that money in a forever appreciating currency, it is fundamentally sound. Like it makes sense. It fundamentally makes sense. It's just that you have to up your risk tolerance. That's all it is. And it's like, it's not even risk tolerance. I think the actual risk is not buying Bitcoin. The actual, the actual risk is not taking advantage of debt to buy Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? That is the real risk. You know, trying to trying to get as much US dollars as you can. That's the risk. Measuring your net worth in dollars instead of Bitcoin. That's the real risk. You know what I'm saying? Go go all in into Bitcoin. Just go all in into Bitcoin. That's what I've been doing this whole entire time. And it's changed. It's completely changed my trajectory of my life. And I'm only 24 years old. I got 1.57 Bitcoins. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the this is the way. This is the way. And this is why this is the entire reason why I created this. Well, it's not why I created the YouTube channel, you know, I got maybe there's like one or two OGs in here that remember back in 2019 when I was making dividend videos and S&P 500 videos. But really, like I started and I took a break after COVID and I stopped making videos for years. I restarted making videos because of Bitcoin, because of this. This is the this is the message that I'm trying to communicate to the world is that Bitcoin is really the answer. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, just buy Bitcoin. Just keep buying Bitcoin. And that's that's pretty much all I have to say. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Please share it. And yeah, I will see you next video.